Thank you all so much for joining today. My name is Katie Ireland, and I'm the Interim Director at the DigiLab, the Digital Humanities Lab here at the University of Georgia Libraries. I am so thrilled to present to you all my work with my colleague, Camille Olivio, who just began a new position as the Scholarly Communications Librarian here in our unit at the University of Georgia Libraries. Our work is titled Our Ladies and Student-Centered Pedagogy, and we just wish we could be there in person with you all for this year's conference, but are grateful to be able to participate otherwise. And thanks for joining and for your feedback. So our work is in collaboration with Our Ladies Athens in addition to the DigiLab. What is the DigiLab? As I mentioned, it is housed within the University of Georgia Libraries and is an interdisciplinary unit. And we exist to support students, faculty, and everyone across the larger university community in their digital scholarship, particularly within digital humanities and open humanities. However, we have had more and more engagement across different disciplines including what we refer to fondly as the south side of campus, so where more of the hard sciences and other disciplines exist, in addition to more traditional humanities disciplines and greater engagement, in particular with linguistics, with English philosophy, and our romance languages departments, in addition to history. We have a physical lab space here in the libraries with specialized computers, high computational processing power, and software. And our unit is currently small but mighty. We have four student research assistants here to help with all of our endeavors within the lab, one undergraduate assistant and three PhD assistants from different disciplines at the University of Georgia. While the DigiLab operates as its own unit, we also regularly collaborate with different units and organizations from across campus. In addition to Our Ladies, the Our Ladies chapter of Athens, Georgia, which is an amazing worldwide organization dedicated to supporting gender diversity in the R programming community. And the R programming community actually suffers from underrepresentation of minority genders, like computer science and other programming languages. It is a major issue, and this is including but not limited to transgender men and women, non binary and agender and individuals. And the R programming language actually involves more than 2 million users wor worldwide. So this is really an amazing organization dedicated to helping to combat bias and issues like gender diversity. All of the work and collaborations that the DigiLab and Our Ladies do together is really housed under these major themes of support training to then empower individuals and communities to fulfill, to achieve, and to chase after their goals, whatever that looks like, whatever type of research or other opportunities come their way. And this is really filled in different types of modes and spaces for learning and different opportunities for growth, including workshops both in person over Zoom, asynchronous and live, open data office hours, and additional resources like book clubs and discussions, like research talks, and as I mentioned, like asynchronous materials so that people can go out and learn in their own time, their own spaces, and at their own paces, which is really one of the best ways possible. 
We have found that workshops are really one of the most important ways, especially pedagogically, with creating carefully scaffolded lessons and opportunities so that beginners have a place to jump in so that more advanced learners needing other types of training can also jump in. And of course, no one workshop is going to be a one-size-fits-all depending on the user's need or the learner's needs. But this is a really great example of a workshop series that we hosted last fall over Zoom, which started with a very basic introduction to text analysis with R, followed by more focus on different types of text data in addition to part of speech tagging and tokenization of text data, and then followed by more advanced text analysis methods within R like topic modeling and sentiment analysis. Now these workshops are generally held live, but we do have recorded workshops so that our students and different groups that are involved can all come together and work on it at different times. And as I mentioned, we also have other opportunities some more informal for getting together for creating community, including research colloquiums and talks and book clubs, as well as interacting with other similar groups across campus. So we collaborated with Girls Who Code, which is another really amazing organization dedicated to promoting gender diversity in a variety of programming environments. And this is an undergraduate-led organization at the University of Georgia. We went with them to visit a local elementary school to help and to learn from these amazing fourth and fifth grade girls to learn about their coding and to teach them a little bit as well. And this was a really amazing and very informal environment. You can see we also shared some stickers with them so that we could all learn from each other. And we've found that this combination of more formal and carefully scaffolded and planned uh, workshops in addition to data office hours, book clubs, and so on really help to facilitate community, and therefore more learning, more ways to connect, and more ways to grow. So larger takeaways, uh, we found that connecting with key organizations like Our Ladies, like Girls Who Code, has really enabled more opportunities for learning and growth, and more ways to connect. And Ultimately, this whole idea of fostering and creating community is really how our instructors, how we as individuals can learn, can grow together, and can combat bias. And this also helps to combat the idea of faculty or graduate students as the solitary gen geniuses by having an honest and open physical or virtual space for people to work, to grow, and to learn together. And we found that this has really opened up new opportunities, including, as I mentioned earlier, more interdisciplinary projects and work together. So I look forward to taking your questions. Please don't hesitate to reach out to email any questions, suggestions, and thanks again for having us.